Ryan Seymour here with my Weld 124 final project. For my final project, I will be doing a front end coil lobe conversion on a McPherson strut assembly from a 1986 Toyota Corolla GTS, also known as chassis code AE86. Now my estimated cost for the project was $220 and the estimated labor time was 4 hours. So we could sit around and talk about it all day, but let's get to work. Now the reason for switching to a coilover unit is the design that allows for ride height adjustability. You want to raise your ride height, spin your spanner nut up. You want to lower your ride height, spin your spanner nut down. Easy as that. We're not trying to put the Apollo on the moon here. Now these are the ground control coilover units outfitted with 7 inch I-box springs rated at 7 kilograms per centimeter squared. That's about a 392 pounds per square inch spring for all you standard guys out there. Now I will be outfitting these with hi-hats that have needle bearings on the top of them that allow them to spin freely on our camber adjustable pillow ball mounts that I will be installing. But seeing as this is not an auto shop class, it's a welding class, we really won't get into that. We'll focus more on the conversion process it takes to convert the McPherson strut design to fit these bad boys. Now these guys retail for $199 plus sales tax was brought us to $215 plus $4 shipping and handling brings us to $219 and I bought a bag of M&M's at the liquor store for about a buck so now my budget's completely blown within the first four minutes of the film but this is pretty much all we need so I'm not too worried about it. Phew hot damn look at them buttes not quite with the strut assembly out of the car it's time for disassembly of the strut and its components. And from the looks of it, you need to do a little bit of cleaning because it looks like the last person to touch these was in Japan on the assembly line 21 years ago. We will be taking off the pillow bowl mounts, coil springs, taking out the dampers, and removing the rotors and wheel bearings. We'll go ahead and start with the rotors, popping off the wheel bearing cap. do this by wedging a screwdriver basically in between there and tapping it off softly there we go I'll have to pull this cotter pin and uh, it's basically a nut under there and this whole assembly fl slide right off pull this cotter pin with some uh, angled cutters doesn't really matter if you mess the cotter pin up because we'll be replacing those anyway Take this guy out. Should be 22 millimeter. Usually a little bit more than hand tight, but I'm pretty buff, so you know I don't really need a socket wrench, a ratchet, what have you. And that's just that. Bam! Now we're rotor this. Congratulations! Now with the rotor and wheel bearing assembly out, we'll go ahead and take off the heat shield, which is basically simple as these four bolts. Alright, our next step is removal of the coil spring, which basically you use a spring compressor to take the pressure off of the spring, because right now it's under a couple hundred pounds of pressure, and hit this 19 millimeter nut with an impact gun. Now it's important to use a spring compressor because right now this is under a couple hundred pounds of uh, pressure like I said and if you just take this off it's going to shoot you right in the face and that's not good because it's going to be hard for you to get dates then. Now after this is all taken off we're going to be taking out the damper which basically this spanner nut comes off you just tap right here with the screwdriver spin it around. Now I do not have a spring compressor or an impact gun so the way I'm doing it is going to be completely the wrong 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 totally unsafe way of doing it so I'm going to go ahead and not show you how to do that because I don't want to be liable so don't try what I'm not about to do at home because you're not going to see it now that you got everything out of your strut casing it's pretty much bare bones minimum nothing left on it everything taken off our next step is to cut this spring perch off the reason why we're doing this 
is because ultimately this coilover is going to be your new spring perch. So, in order to make room for this guy, you got to cut this one off. So, sorry stock spring perch. I know we had some good times, but you got to go, buddy. Now I'm going to use this 4 inch hand grinder with cutoff wheel to go ahead and cut off the spring perch. What's that Chewbacca? <laughs> Thanks, Chewy. You heard the Wookie. Cutting metal is dangerous, so wear your safety glasses. Now with the spring perch cut off, we're going to have to take 40 millimeters out of the shock tube and weld it back together. Because the damper I'm running is a little bit shorter than OEM, which I'll explain to you right now. <laughs> 